Dabo, right now uh, in camp uh, for this particular position that you play, uh, how how tough is it to a achieve fitness, but more importantly, maintain your fitness right now uh, with the waves of weather and certainly the heat and humidity that you guys are are you know plowing through right now? I don't think our overall fitness is the issue. It's more of maintaining our weight because we lose a ton of water weight with how hot it is and everything like that. And um, also something that our strength coach has always said is making sure that we're still like sprinting 100 percent because like with fullbacks, it's we'll play in like a 10 yard box. So it's hard to get that full sprint sometimes. So keeping that up, like, and uh, accounting for those during warmups is something that is something that we've always had in our minds. You've got terrific competition in your room. How much does that help you guys maintain focus and obviously make sure every rep is executed uh, to its maximum right now? Oh, a lot. Absolutely. Because we got, we got great guys in our room. Uh, they've always been focused, dedicated. Um, one guy, Alex Tesca, he's a very talented running back. Um, and having him there just helps elevate my game also because I can watch him, see what he does. And, and, um, and then like recognize what he does well. And then also since, since we have a lot of young guys, just being able to teach them what to do also helps me refocus my mind also, but then also the competition aspect of, you know, you got one guy breaking out big runs. So then you feel the pressure to break up break out a big run yourself is also something that helps elevate our game without obviously the you know game type detail that might give something away but with the concepts that have been introduced offensively has there been a dramatic change at all for you at your position uh, and the things you guys are responsible for or is it pretty much status quo I would say our focus is exactly the same. There's some small minor details that change every now and again with different concepts that we're running, but our focus of pass blocking, making sure we're running our tracks correctly, um, the mesh with the quarterback is always something that's gonna that's never gonna change with no matter what we add or take away. Okay, I'll pass it to somebody else. I uh, wagged. <laughs> Hey, Daba, how are you? Hey, yeah, uh, how are you? How, with the new offense, is, it, is there much different for the fullback? Is there some different things you're doing that you haven't in the past? I would just say, I would just say versatility. Like, there's, like, with how talented our room is, um, we have guys who do a lot of different things, like catching out of the backfield and everything like that. Um, so having that element to our game, is huge and um yeah I would I would really just say versatility because yes being able to block and pass protect is a huge part of our game but then also being able to add add another dimension to our offense with um you know with check downs or like swings out the backfield everything like that so I was asking Ch coach Chestnut on Saturday who have been some of the leaders on offense and he mentioned you specifically can you kind of tell me as a guy that's Played a lot of football. Do you, have, do you feel a responsibility to be a leader of the entire unit? Absolutely. But it's not because of like, it, it, it's because I've had, I have, I've had game experience and I've seen, I've seen um, the field a lot more on offense than some of the other guys in, in our backfield specifically. Um, but that responsibility, it's, it's a privilege to have and to be able to uh, help, help young guys um, bring them to where they need to be. And then also making sure that the energy, our offense of our offense and our, and the focus of our offense is, um, you know, is where it needs to be, but it's not, but I'm not like the only leader, of course, like we got Lirion Mortezzi, who's the captain of our football team. And we got I, who's a very experienced quarterback, very savvy quarterback. Um, yeah, we have a lot of those experienced guys that help keep our offense in focus. What are some of the things you wanted to improve upon as a fullback? Um, definitely being more technical in pass protection instead of just, you know, throwing it up in there. Uh, but, like, actually, you know, understanding my hand placement and where my feet are supposed to be to deliver a good blow. Um, 
just making sure my tracks are consistent so that it helps the quarterbacks out with the mesh and making their reads a lot easier. And um, yeah, I would say just continuing to develop my ability to catch out of the backfield and running routes and stuff like that to give our offense the best chance on third down. And, you know, things are like when all the reads are taken away and, and I need to, I need to catch the ball and make people miss in space, everything like that. All right. I'll pass it off. Thank you. Scott Wyckoff. Hey, Daba, Scott Wyckoff from WBAL radio in Baltimore. How fired up are you guys to be getting ready now to play Notre Dame on such a national stage? We're insanely excited because this is an opportunity that we've never had before. And uh, and to play a team of this caliber for this kind of opportunity is just insane to think about. We want to make the most of it and we want to win. So the energy right now is insanely high and it's awesome. And I love being a part of it. And how do you like having Notre Dame to look forward to as the first game, not near the end of the season, but that first game right out of the blocks to start the season? It's, I mean, I love it because then we get our season, like having that kind of challenge at the beginning of the season makes the rest of the season not so daunting because uh, we know, we know how good Notre Dame is and how much we have to prepare for them. And it also sets the tone for how our season is supposed to be and how focused we're supposed to be because um, when you prepare for a team like Notre Dame, you can't slack off at all whatsoever. And then that will set the standard for our uh, preparation for every single other thing that we come across, no matter how good or uh, no matter how good they are. What did it mean to you last year? And what do you think it'll mean this year? Having that experience of having lined up against Notre Dame and having carried the ball and played a team like that. I think it'll... I think it'll calm my mind a little bit, my nerves, just because I do have that experience and I understand that I can play at this level. Um, I mean, it doesn't take away from the fact I'm going to appreciate the big moment and everything like that, because like I said before, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity and it's a blessing to be a part of. But, um, but yeah, just being able to focus on what I need to focus on and zero in in the moment is something that that experience is going to help me with. In the recruiting process, was the fact that you knew that you'd be playing Notre Dame each and every season that you got out on the field at the Naval Academy, was that something that was important to you to be playing in games like this? Yeah, it was, def it was definitely a part of it because, like, who's like who doesn't want to play in big games like that against Notre Dame or even just stages like the Army Navy game? Like, it's it's a huge like it's a part of my childhood dream to be able to play ga playing games like that. So. Uh, Factoring those kind of things in coming coming into the Naval Academy, it was it was definitely it was definitely a dream come true in that aspect. Seeing you practice and play, it really looks like you enjoy playing football at the Naval Academy and you succeed at it. How about academically? I mean, you you've done tremendously in the classroom. Do you enjoy the academics as much as you do the football? I do. I mean, it's definitely hard and it's a different kind of fun that I have with it. But um, but I do definitely enjoy it because I because God. God gave everyone specific talents and specific things that they're good at. And it's and I and I feel I feel it's a duty that I should be able to take advantage of those opportunities and of those talents that he's given me. So I just continue to do that every single day with a smile on my face because because I know what the purpose is. Thanks a lot, Dava. Uh, Randy Cross. Hey, Dava, Randy Cross, CBS. Um, can you talk a little bit about being a fullback, what that job means in this offense? I mean, you're, you're the, you're sort of the, being a fullback in an option offense is the guy that everybody screams about, about the fifth or sixth time they give it to the fullback and it goes right up the middle and nothing happens. Uh, <laughs> at least that's been my experience. Uh, can you talk about it? You talk about that job? Yeah. So um, first of all, the fullback is, it's a very essential part of this offense. And I feel it's, I feel it's our job to get this off and get the offense going because everything like it revolves around the fullback. Like if you get the fullback, like they say, if you get the fullback going, then you get it. Then you get the offense going. Um, but it's not our job just to be able to carry the ball. It's also our job to be able to, to block and to 
ensure that our quarterback's protected in the pocket when he's dropping back to pass and that our eight backs are protected when he's blocking the perimeter. Um, and then also now with kind of the, some of the things that we're adding to be able to catch the ball at the back would add, add a dimension to our passing game. Um, but really our whole offense starts with the O-line and how good of a job they do. And we, and it's our job to trust them and their responsibility and that they, and that they do their jobs also. And I know they will. And, um, but, but yeah, it's our job, but like, as, like, as a fullback, it's our job to, um, to just make sure that we're the rock of the offense. And most importantly, that we protect the ball no matter what, and that we don't turn it over. How long did it take you to sort of adjust to that position? I mean, you, what, what were your thoughts the first time they showed you, they kind of told you where you were lining up, how close you were going to be to the quarterback and how little time you have to react? It was kind of scary at first. Well, I mean, yeah, I'd say it was kind of scary at first because it was like you have to make all these reads and have your footwork down correctly within the span of like not even half a second. But um, but it took me – let me think. My freshman year, I didn't get a whole ton of – I didn't get playing time at all, so I was just on scout team. But then I guess during that spring camp is when I started adjusting a little bit. And then when fall camp rolled around the next year of my sophomore year, then um, then that's when things started, you know, getting – then when my eyes and uh, feet started adjusting. But things didn't actually – Things didn't actually click a hundred percent until like mid season when I had a ton of reps already. And, but it's, it's all about, you know, getting reps, 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 and seeing that with your eyes and seeing the defense with the ball in your hands. Uh, it's always, it's always been interesting to me how those decisions are made considering you don't have any time to react hardly. Yeah. 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 Um, it, I mean, it's, 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 it's part of the fun though of our position. As, as a team, you know, especially offensively, have, have there been much talk about how important it's, it's always going to be important for you guys to stay on the field, but especially in this opener, you know, you guys got to hold on to the ball. You got to pi just pile up some time of possession just to keep their offense off the field. And no, no one, no one at there, I'm sure there at Navy wants to find out how high powered that could be with that new quarterback in it. Yeah. I mean, respect to their offense because they have some insane players. Like I've seen their running back and he's, he's insanely good too. And, that, and, and uh, we definitely do want to keep them off the field, but um, I know with our offense that we need to get some explosive plays in too and controlling the ball at the same time while getting some explosive plays to build some momentum is, is a key part of winning this game. All right. Thanks, Devin. I've got one before we go to Pete. Um, Baba, Khalil Crawford, senior, has not played the first three years. Um, it seems to me when, I, when the times I've been out there, he's he's had a pretty good camp. Say it one more time and cut out a little bit. That's okay. Khalil Crawford, senior, who has not played the first three years. It looks to me like he's had a pretty good camp uh, so far. What, what, do you, what are your thoughts on Khalil? Oh, 100%. He's adjusted to this offense really well. Like when he came in in the spring, it was like – he didn't know a whole ton of what we was what he was doing just because you know he has he hasn't been there. But then now during fall camp and then working with him a little bit during the summer and stuff too, he's adjusted really well. He's he's a great player. He's starting to pick up. He's starting to pick up a lot of things. He's just a great football player overall. Like not just a fullback, not just you know uh, when he used to be a linebacker. Like he's a great football player. Like he can do it. He can do anything you ask him to. And he's also very physical. Not scared to throw it up in there. And something that we laugh about sometimes is how, um, like, how he likes to do his own thing sometimes and just have fun with it. Like, once, like one time he went to go block on the perimeter and he like fake faked out a linebacker with his eyes and then went turn around and blocked him. It was something that we never taught, but it was just something that was pretty fun. Like he he kind of like him doing that just helps him become like helps him uh, be a better football player overall. And yeah, it's it's fun to watch him. Thank you. I, I should have said, too, that Khalil moved from uh, linebacker to fullback this spring. He previously was a linebacker. Uh, Pete, Medhurst. Dava, how much does family pride drive you? Uh, I know you're named after your grandfather, and 
your name has meaning uh, of hard worker. Uh, so uh, how much does that family pride drive you every day? It's a, I mean, it, it means a lot to me just because I was like, I was raised really well by my parents and I want to make sure that their work was worth it. And, um, and then also like when, when they see me on TV and they see, you know, these interviews and everything like that, that they can look at me, that they can look at me and say that they raise, that they raise, that they raise me well and that they're proud of me. It's something that's very important to me. Um, most of all, what drives me though is not is not like family. It's understanding who I am with God and why He created me and what my purpose is. That's that's mainly what drives me, and um, and just making sure I'm taking advantage of all the opportunities that, he, that He's given me, even though I don't deserve them. Your teammates at West Forsyth were playing in the national championship game uh, last year with Georgia and TCU. What is it about that school? Uh, that seems to produce the level of athlete uh, that it does because there are a lot of guys like yourself running around Division One football and, and really doing good things. Yeah, so we didn't – our school didn't start producing a whole ton of that until, like, we started taking the work into our own hands and grinding during the summers because around COVID – it was like my senior year was around COVID and we just were working nonstop. And then that translated to the field and, um, and just having that next level of drive is something that uh, helped us produce some players out of there. And um, like Oscar Delphi a freak athlete. I worked with him a lot during the summer with routes and everything like that. And then Dylan Fairchild, I saw him grinding, um, lifting nonstop. I lifted him and he's crazy strong, a lot stronger than I am. But, um, but yeah, just working with those guys off, like off the field and out of school is something that helps. It is something that helped produce a lot of players out of there. As someone obviously that enjoys music, plays the cello, is there an orchestra that you've either played with at some point or would like to play with potentially uh, down the road uh, and expand your horizons there? So. Last year, or not last year, my freshman year, um, when I was on scout team and stuff, I was actually doing the orchestra here at the Naval Academy for a little bit, um, just because I had the time to, and it was really fun. I actually had a solo in towards the end of the year. Um, that was really fun, but then football started picking up and I couldn't continue with it, but eventually I would like to. I'm not sure where specifically, but it would have to be when I'm done with football and I'm done with the military and stuff like that. But I would definitely continue to uh, play on my own 100% and continue to build upon my skills so that I can have it as a hobby when I'm older. Appreciate you. Good luck. Thank you. How about win the Army-Navy MVP on Saturday afternoon and play Boston Pops on Saturday night? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. That'd be so funny. <laughs> Flags. Java, real quick, you mentioned him. Alex Texia, um, I probably didn't pronounce that right. Um, I've heard some good things about him. What can you say? What's he bring to the table? So he's insanely quick, insanely fast, has really good instincts, good vision to see the hole. And his burst is his burst is very, very good. So when he sees something, he can just hit it and then it'll be gone. Um and also, he adds he adds a little bit of fun to our room, just cracking jokes like crazy. Uh, he's a fun dude to be around. But in terms of like his skill on the field, and yeah, you can also catch up in the backfield, which is which is something that we need. Um, but yeah, I'd say those things. And he's he's just a very very good running back, and I can't wait to see him continue to develop and to play alongside him. Last for me, who else is popping within the fullback room? Anybody else showing us some good things? Um, I mean, like we like we talked about, Khalil, he's been working his way up the depth, um, picking up the game as it comes to him. Um, who else? Um, Dre ponder a little bit because he he used to he used to be quarterback and then now he switched a little bit. He switched, but. 
Um, he's a big body, physical, very athletic. Um, Logan points in there. He was a slot back, then back to fullback. Yeah, yeah. Logan's always been good. He's always been consistent. Um, yeah, he's definitely a good player. Physical. Can always block for us. Um, but I'd say, yeah. Shane Reynolds is another one. Yes, absolutely. Um, he has some speed. He runs like a, he runs like a low four four. He's like one. Of, he's like one of if not the fastest in our room. And uh, yeah, and then we have Kenzo. Kenzo can throw it up. He can he can block really well. Um, throw it up with linebackers, knock them back. Um, yeah, that's good that I've seen out of him. Um, yeah. And then the plebes, the plebes are looking good. They're developing, uh, continuing to get better every single day. But yeah. Is that it, Wags? It's Tesca, by the way, Tesca. Scott, Wyckoff. Yeah, just one more for me, uh, Dava. Last year, you and Anton were one heck of a one-two punch at fullback. How cool is it this year that you get to be in the backfield with Anton at the same time? Yeah, that's pretty cool, actually, because um, something I thought about before was, like, we both have we both have good skill sets, and it, it sucks that, we're, that we have to, like, alternate in and out of it. But then now that we have both the skill sets on the field, like him as a perimeter blocker is is – is uh is a key to you know getting some explosive plays out out on the out, like out on the perimeter and um and then him with the ball in his hands being very quick uh that's like a back suits him and he'll be a very very good player for us and then us being in the backfield together is uh it'll call it it'll wreak it'll wreak some havoc i can tell you that thanks a lot randy yeah, Dava, it's, it's a little bit out of left field. That's kind of how I roll. Um, <laughs> Georgia high school football. You look at Coach Chestnut, it's got a Georgia background. Newberry's got a Georgia background. You and some other guys on the team. Hey, what is it about Georgia football that makes the match for service academies? Because they've, they've got kids from Georgia in all three of them. I mean, it's really just the South. Like, like when, you think of, when you think of the football in the South, you think of Georgia – and um, and it's just hard nosed, physical, um, and then the hard coaching that you receive. Like, it's just it's just a different breed of football. So then, when those kids come out of high school, they're disciplined. They know how to take coaching. They know how to take hard coaching, and that translates to call that translates to college. And that's kind of what service academies look for is you know being coachable, being smart, being and then like understanding the physicality of the next level um yeah and and I actually I actually uh went to school like 30 minutes from where coach chestnut uh came from and uh yeah I live in Alpharetta oh really yeah oh that's pretty so cool I'm, that's like I'm very familiar yeah 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 that's like 15 minutes from where I'm from that's that's pretty yeah. cool um, but yeah, I would just say the hard nosed mentality of the South is something that produces service academy kids really well. Cool. Thank you. The uh, Florida guys in the team may take exception to you saying that <laughs> Florida is the state you think of when you think of the South. I know. I know. <laughs> well, the Florida's be prepared. Be prepared. They're going to come after you. <laughs> that, was, oh, yeah. that, was yesterday. that was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> this is a church of what's happening right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Coach, uh, good to see you. Um, what can you say about Daba Fafana? He's an experienced guy. He had a pretty good season last year. Uh, what are you seeing out of Daba? Daba, as you guys probably know, is an absolutely awesome kid. Very intelligent. Very high football IQ. Wonderful leader for our program. Kind of a quiet leader, but leads by example. And uh, – He's playing well thus far this summer. He's he's having a really good preseason camp. Proud of him. I know you weren't fullback fullbacks coach last year, but I mean, from watching film or maybe 
getting reports from the other coaches. What did Daba need to improve upon? What what could he do to take his game to another level? I get, you know, finishing his runs uh, would be one, and you know, working on his hands, running crisper routes, a lot of little nuances here and there that I, I think he's taken a lot of pride in this summer so far. Sorry, it's hard to get off mute sometimes. Um, he's got the break. With, uh, he had a long run against Notre Dame last year, I believe. Yes. Um, he had a lot of long runs against a lot of teams. Do you like having that breakaway ability at the fullback position? Oh, there's there's no doubt because uh, so if, if those – those second level and third layer, third level players are out of position. That 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 B back, that T back position, they can pop it for a long run, which is what happened versus Notre Dame last year. And uh, I, I feel like we got two guys very capable of that, along with Alex Tesca as well. I mean, those, those two guys, they they can take it to the house. I'll ask about Texas later. Uh... I, I can't pronounce that name for like That's me. Good. I still can't. No, we got never, it, Coach. We got it. <laughs> I'm with him every day, and I still mess it up. <laughs> Alex, I'm just going to call him Alex. That's exactly right. I'm right. Off to someone else. Uh, why, go ahead, Scott Wyckoff. Yeah, Coach Scott Wyckoff from WBAL Radio in Baltimore, also the Navy Radio Network. What was it about this job specifically for you that that made you leave such a great job? that you had at Mississippi College, all that was involved there with your family to come here yeah. to the Naval Academy? You, you know, it, it was not easy. You know, my wife being a head volleyball coach and and uh, the, time, the, the, timing, the timing could not have been better because my oldest daughter just got through playing. If she had another year of college, it would have been difficult to take this job. <laughs> And uh, I, the good Lord works in mysterious ways. And then that, that it really worked. To, the timing was, was good. You know, I've been up here many times over the years. I've known Coach Newberry for many years. I've known Coach Ingram for many years. And uh, it, that made it so much easier to accept this job. Take us behind the scenes when you're with the offensive staff. I mean, I think there are five if not current or former offensive coordinators, it must be really cool when you guys throw around ideas specifically about this offense that you guys are playing at Navy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It, it, it is. It, it, it can be, uh, we could sit there all day and throw out ideas, but at the end of the day, it's coach chestnuts offense and uh, we're all bought into that. And yeah, sure. we we throw out some ideas and he'll, he'll, uh, ask us our opinions on some things and, and uh, we're, we're gelling and getting things worked out and tweaking things here and there, but uh, uh, it, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's been i I'm learning a, a great deal. What went into the thinking to move Anton uh, away from fullback to slot back? You know, in today's time when you can't cut block anymore, you need that bigger slot back type of body. And he brings that to the table. He's going to be able to match up with some bigger linebackers out there in our blocking schemes and things like that. And plus, he's got really good speed and great hands. So, made a lot of sense to us. And how do you like that as a fullbacks coach, having the ability now to have your fullback in the same backfield at the same time with Anton? It, it, it adds a lot to, uh, to our menu, you know, and it, it makes those other guys have to think a little bit about, okay, they got so-and-so out there. So that, that, you know, puts a lot on the opposing defenses as well. You've had a lot of different groups of fullbacks that you've coached over your career. What do you like specifically about this team as you come to the Naval Academy and, and now prepare for this first game against Notre Dame? Well, we have some depth at our fullback position. And, uh, and of course, those guys get hit a lot. And uh, they're in the action a lot in the interior line. So uh, it's great to have have that depth and uh, guys that are they're not just hammerheads up in there. They they can run and catch and do a lot of the other little things that that you uh, ask that you even ask those slot backs to do. So uh, that that's that's been the best thing so far this summer with those guys. 
And finally, you've coached at a lot of great academic institutions to go along with the football. What are your perceptions of the Naval Academy scholar athlete in the in the time that you've had with them, both in the spring and now in the fall? Well, it's it, you know it's been wonderful, and you're right. I have coached at some high academic institutions, and uh, a lot on the a lot of it's been on the same level academically. Smarts, you only have to tell these guys one time, and they usually pick it up pretty fast, and that's very enjoyable because uh, they just hear it one time, and they if they do mess it up, it, you know it's going to get corrected in a hurry. So that, that's. That's why I love coaching this type of kid. Thanks, Coach. Yes, sir. Thank you. Randy Cross. Training camp's usually a uh, interesting time for uh, for football teams, kind of as things come together. How has this one been for for this team as you're sort of going through through it with them for the first time? Well, it, it's it's been a grind this summer, and. Uh, uh, Scott, tell me if I'm wrong. This could be the longest season in Navy football history, possibly. You're correct. And, uh, longest regular season, that's for sure. I, I felt like we started back in June, but we actually started like July 21st in that area. So it, it's uh, it, it's it seems like we've been practicing a long time, and I, I think these guys are ready to go play a game here really soon. So it, it it's been interesting compared to where I've been in the in the past. You know, we didn't have all this time in the summer that we have with these kids here uh, at the smaller levels. You just don't, you just don't have all the manpower and the resources to do all the, have all these practice sessions and wait sessions throughout the summer. So th that's, that's been very enjoyable. With, with a good bit of newness on this team, is that extra time together kind of something you can turn into an advantage if it's, if it's uh, used properly? Uh, no, no doubt. And I think we are using it properly and uh, I think we'll get it done. That's uh, the, the newness is sometimes goodness. So hopefully it will be for us. Well, it'll ship, certainly is going to be an interesting travel schedule. For no, you doubt. Guys coming <laughs> no, <in. laughs> no doubt. I actually Come took in. my, I actually took my team at Swanee when I was a head coach. We I took our team to Ireland and we, we played the Belfast Trojans. That, that was a lot of fun. Uh, it was more of a touristy thing, but uh, I'm looking forward to going back. Oh, that's great. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Wags. Well, you mentioned Alex. Would he tell, why don't you tell us what the you – know, I've heard a lot of good reports about him and what he's doing this August camp. What, what is Alex bringing to – he doing that's impressing people? Alex is one of those kids, it, it's, he can be running full speed and make a simple cut look so easy. Well, I should say a difficult cut looks so easy. And you don't, you can't coach that. And he has that gift to where he can just stick his foot in the ground and redirect running at full speed. And uh, I haven't coached many of those type of kids over the years. And uh, from what I hear, we haven't had those that many of those type of players here as well. So he he brings a he brings that type of athleticism. Once he gets in that linebacker secondary level, he can make those cuts and make people miss. And I'm not saying Daba can't do that, but there's a little bit of a difference there. And uh, they're those two guys have their own little deals that they're good good at so but but Alex really brings that to the table and what about behind those two who's showing you something as far as fighting to get on the depth chart and get on the bus to go to Ireland you know Khalil's had a good summer uh Ponder's about Ponder's starting to come around um and also you know Shane Reynolds has had a good summer Logan Point is very dependable uh, so so you know Khalil Crawford's been he, he's really stepped his game up this summer compared to the spring. We've been very proud of him. He's more of a be-back plugger type of guy, but but he, he's, he'll be a helping hand for us this fall. How many uh, fullbacks do you anticipate traveling to Ireland? Right now we're thinking four, possibly five, but uh, we're not sure yet. Still got some more, a few more practices, but uh, we'll figure it all out here in about a week. 
And uh, of that five, would some of them play special teams? I know Dava wouldn't, but maybe Correct. a couple of guys yes, lower on the Yes, team. sir. No doubt. No doubt. We, we're going to depend on a couple of those guys to give us some really good help special teams-wise. Thanks, Coach. Yes, sir. Thank you. Ah, Wyckoff. Coach, in talking to the players, each one to a man just fired up about this opportunity to start the season on a national stage against Notre Dame. What does it mean for you in the career you've had coaching to have this opportunity to coach and be on the sidelines in a game like this to begin the season in week zero against Notre Dame? You know, it's it's going to be a it's going to be a weird feeling to me. I've I've watched many of Army Navy, Navy Notre Dame, just Navy games in general over the years. I've recorded them over the years. I've studied their film. I've been up here for spring practices. I've been to two Army Navy games. I've actually I've actually been to a Notre Dame game at Notre Dame. A good friend of mine lives about a mile from the stadium, so I've I've been there as well. But but it's it's probably going to be a little surreal at first. But uh, I'm very grateful, very humble to be in this position to be able to be a part of this. No doubt about it. And also, what does it mean for you to be a part of this offense that's evolving, this triple option that's really taking it to another level across the nation and and, and really being an integral part of that? So excited, so excited to be a part of it. And like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm still learning. And uh, Coach Chestnut's doing a great job of teaching us and helping us know what he's thinking. And uh, it, it's – it's evolving well. It's it's going to be it's going to be fun. And finally, how is it to have that defensive perspective with Coach Newberry being able to say, you know, this is what really bothered me when I would play, and this sure. is what defenses problems when I would play uh, against the option. That's right. He's he's really good at that. He'll he'll stick his head in the door every once in a while in our offensive meetings and have a few things to say that helps us and. Uh, He's he's a very very knowledgeable guy and and that, like you said that that's that's big that's very helpful helpful for us. Thanks, coach. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Randy. Hey, uh, not giving anything away, but but how how expanded is the fullback's role in this offense? Uh, how unusual is it going to be? I mean, it's it it seems to be something that's. It's going to be kind of. It's going to be a little bit funner to to do and to see. Is funner a word? <laughs> it is now. It is. <laughs> hey, I enjoyed watching you play back in the day. Mr. Thank Carl, you. By the way, you, let me say this: uh, the fullback position here is going to be more diverse, and uh, the, the, he has had to learn a lot more than what he's been used to, which is a good thing. Yeah. And and they've bought in and they're they're very very happy about it. Well, if if anything, it's gonna it's gonna challenge them to expand their own kind of toolbox as a player because exactly. they actually get the they actually get to function in air, which is something fullbacks in this offense don't get much air around. Right. Exactly. You're exactly right. Yes, sir. Any anything else? As a Cowboys fan, I never rooted for Randy. I'm not. I'm not ashamed to say that. <laughs> Thank I told, you so I much for Dabba, that, by the way. I told What's Dabba that? he reminds me of Robert Newhouse. Ah, uh, there we go. I like that. I told Dabba that back in the spring. I said, "You remind me of Robert Newhouse." He had no idea who I was talking. No about. No way he knew who Robert Newhouse was. <laughs> he wrote dance. I yeah, love he, Robert he, Newhouse. He only has to add about four or five inches of those quads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 